Fag in. The receiver of stolen goods was up early one morning and waited impatiently for the arrival of his new associate, now Claypole, otherwise Morris Bolter, who at length presented himself and, cutting a monstrous slice of bread, commenced a voracious assault upon the breakfast. Bolter. Bolter. Bolter! What? What? Here I am. What's the matter? So don't you go asking me to do anything until I have done eating. That is a great fault in this place. You never get enough time over your meals. You can talk as you eat, can't you? Yeah, I can talk. I, I get on better when I talk. Talk away. You won't interrupt me. I want you, Bolter, to do a piece of work for me, my dear, that needs great care and caution. I say, don't you go shoving me into danger. You know, that don't suit me, that don't. And so I tell you, there's not the very smallest danger in it, not the very smallest. It's only to dodge a woman. Do that pretty well, I reckon. I was a regular sneak when I was at school. What am I to dodge her for? Not to not to do anything, my dear. But tell me where she goes, who she sees, and if possible what she says. To remember the house, if it is a house or the street, if it is a street. And to bring me back all the information you can. What do you give me? If you do well, my dear. A pound. One pound. And that is what I never gave yet for any job of work where there wasn't a valuable consideration to be got. Who is she? One of us. Oh, Lord, you doubtful of her, are you? She's found out some new friends, my dear. And I must know who they are. Ah, I see. I'm your man. Where am I to go? Where am I to wait for her? What am I to do? All that, my dear, you shall hear from me at the proper time. You keep ready here and leave the rest to me. That night and the next and the next again. The spy sat ready to turn out at a word from Fagin. Six nights passed, and on each, Fagin came home with a disappointed face and briefly intimated that it was not yet time. On the seventh, he returned, exultant. It was Sunday night. She goes abroad tonight on the right errand, I am sure. Come with me, quick. The man she is afraid of will not be back much before daybreak. Come with me, quick. They left the house and, stealing through a labyrinth of streets, arrived at length at a public house. It was past eleven o'clock and the door was closed, but it opened softly as Fagin gave a low whistle. They entered without noise. Scarcely venturing to whisper, but substituting dumb show for words, Fagin pointed to a pane of glass high on the wall to Noah and signed to him to climb up on a piece of furniture below it and observe the person in the adjoining room. Is that the woman? Yeah. I can't see her face while she's looking down and the candle is bit... Oh, I see her now. Plainly. I should know her among a thousand. The spy descended, the room door opened, the girl came out. Fagin drew him beside a small partition, and they held their breath as she passed within a few feet of their places of concealment and emerged by the door at which they had entered. After her, to the left, take the left hand and keep on the opposite side. After her. The 
spy darted off.